Welcome to Emotion Chips, where we talk about the real reason everything happens for a reason. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Rich Fresh. Kind of talking about what's going on in, in society today. We met in, in New York City, right. uh, and it has kind of become the epicenter, or, or at least initially was the epicenter of the coronavirus, which... You know, what I have seen is that when a catastrophe or, or something like a pandemic happens, the the real me starts to come out when the when the pressure is there. P- pressure and fire and heat always tends to bring who we really are versus the purest qualities. Yeah. Yeah. And and, yeah. and you of all people know that in, in dealing with textiles and the materials that you deal with. Absolutely. Thoughts on on twenty twenty. I think we all knew it was going to be a different year. I don't know yeah. that we expected this. You know, man, everyone was saying 2020 is going to be the year of vision. Year of vision mm-hmm. because yeah. 2020 right. vision, stupid right. motherfuckers. Um, that's what y'all get for, like, fucking <laughs> doing that shit. It's year of vision, man, 2020. It sure is a year of vision. <laughs> Visualize yourself in the fucking house all day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it started off, uh, I ain't going to lie, it started off really on fire, like, my year started off amazing, amazing. Everything you could think, like just if I could think it, it was just like fucking falling in my lap. And I was like, yo, this is God. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, and shit was just turning up. And then all of a sudden you heard about this thing going on in Wuhan. It's like, oh, damn, that's fucked up. Today dealing with that shit over there. Mm-hmm. Right. Damn, that's fucked up that that shit made it all the way over to Italy. How the fuck you make it over to Italy? Did it get on a plane? That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. Damn, you mean he made his way over to Florida? What the fuck you mean, Florida? How the fuck you get to you? So it's like you're seeing this thing happen, and it's like, oh, damn. But like you said, you know, some people um, fold under pressure. Sure. It's the easiest thing to do. Right. You know, the easiest thing to do. Like yesterday, we were going through our thing at the body garage, and there was a point where you were putting extreme pressure in spots that needed pressure. Right. The easiest thing to do is say, dude, stop, this hurts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of motherfuckers may have said, dude, stop, this hurts. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's just go on to the next module. But sometimes you got to, like, be willing to go through this thing to find, like, what am I really capable of? Sure. And so this is one of those experiences where, shit, everything stopped. So what am I really capable of? You know, am I only able to be great when things are running smooth? Or can I be great in the midst of any circumstance? Yeah. And this is just like, I don't know, the way that we bounce back uh, throughout this pandemic just kind of shows like our character, you know, who we really are. Yeah. And, and, and what we're putting our sense of security and, and safety in, it's almost as if, and I want to be sensitive here because, you know, if you've lost a loved one at any point in time in your life, you know how hard and devastating that can be, especially Absolutely. when you had a close bond with them. And we know that there are people out there that have lost loved ones through this right. like let's start there and acknowledge that that being said there there are uh, other factors involved where this is an election year in this country and the rule of thumb over the last 50 years at least in this country that seems to be highly political is anything that happens in an election year is because of the election now right. that being said i'm not saying that covid-19 does not exist we know that it exists right but there has not been uh, a gap or any hesitancy for people who aren't out there doing it on their own uh, and, and in some ways making it happen for themselves to use anything they can to include COVID-19 to serve themselves. Right. Yeah, it's real. I mean, there are people who are manipulating. They're manipulating people around them for, you know, Whatever their gain is going to be, you know, there's a lot of money that's being shifted around right now. Yeah. Um, and fear is powerful. You know, you keep people in a state of fear. Yeah. Perpetual fear. Yeah. They will usually walk through whatever door you direct them to. Yeah. So I agree with you on that. You know, like, again, like I've lost a family member to it. I got another family member who's dealing with it. Um, so, you know, I know that it's something about it's real. Sure. It's just, you know, (laughs) 
what's behind it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. It, it's unfortunate that we live in a country where we have to second guess our government, but we live in a country where we have to second guess our government. So you got to look yeah. at everything. Like, what's behind this? Because there are people that sure. are so smart and so strategic. What are they planning? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only time will tell. Well, uh, I, again, uh, you know, when it comes to the power of fear to move people, w- when there is turmoil, you know, in the security world, when, when something initially happens, like when shots are fired, mm-hmm. we're not necessarily paying attention to where the shots came from or where they were fired. Right. We're looking for what if that was a distraction and who's coming in the back door. Mm. So, so we know that that initial uh, that initial action that, that instigates fear mm-hmm. can often be to direct people in another way or to push them in another way so that you can take advantage of them. People are sheep, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Majority of people are fucking sheep. Yeah. They will do whatever you tell them. Yeah. They'll eat whatever you tell them. They'll drink whatever you tell them. Fucking put this in my body. Whatever you say, they'll do it. They yeah. just, they're not free thinkers. Can I be a little provocative? Provoke, bro. So when, when anybody that is listening to this can go back and listen to previous episodes to figure out what the podcasts and therefore my and Mallory's stance is on Black Lives Matter, right? So you're going to have to go get that history in order to figure out where I stand on that. Jumping forward, when someone says Black Lives Matter, my question is why? Right. And I, and I ask that question to expose exactly what you just said. And that is a hundred percent. Charlie's opinion is black lives matter, but they better matter for the right reason versus somebody trying to steer them or manipulate them for their own selfish purposes or a political vote. They fucking do that shit. They'll say it because it's like, it's the cool, it's the trending thing. Drives me crazy, man. But can you stand on it? Sure. It's one thing to say something, but can you stand on that shit? Mm. You know, I was before the podcast started, I was having a back and forth with a uh, buddy who turns out he's an all lives matter guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking clown. Which just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, I get it in a sense. All humans do matter. But, you know, he's a biblical person. Like, you're a, you're a church guy, right? You're sure. a business person, right? So what do you do? You you know, you run a business. You got a whole company. You got multiple areas of your operation. And a lot of them are running pretty okay. But you got this one area over here that's just fucked. It's it's doing bad. But you really yeah. needed to do good for your whole operation to be successful. Yeah. But this one area is really underperforming. Sure. Where do you allocate your resources? Right, yeah. Do you allocate them across the board evenly? Right. To areas that don't need it? Or do you allocate those resources where it's apparent that there's lack. Yeah. They really need this energy right here. So that's the whole thing. It's not that all lives don't. It's just I don't think that there's a consensus that black lives do. Sure. So that needs to be like first part of the sentence. By the way, black lives matter. In addition to that, all lives also matter. But just to be clear, since we're in a country that has been like founded on the concept that black lives don't matter, Mm -hmm. they matter like three fifths of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, You would think like, you know, 2020, all things have changed. Things haven't changed. You know, we're seeing it. Things haven't changed. Like a man got snuffed out in the middle of the street on camera um, in broad daylight. It's not proportionate. It's very disproportionate. So the first thing we got to do, I think the first thing that needs to be done is just identifying who needs the help. Sure. Especially when you're like the stronger, you know what I'm saying? If you're a big, strong motherfucker, you don't take up for the bully. You don't take up for the other strong. You take up for the weak. Like, who needs my fucking help? You never saw Superman helping all these other motherfucking heroes. He was helping the person that needed it. Isn't it interesting? Isn't that thought alone interesting? And I've I've said something similar to that just in an approach to managers and leaders and business owners. Like, when you start complaining about the people underneath you, you totally have missed the concept as to what real leadership is about. Absolutely. If you expect as a leader, manager, owner, for everyone to be on your level, then why is there a need? What is a leader in that case? Right. And, and, and so that in and of itself just shows you that, you know, when I hear someone say, well, 
all lives matter, it really just confirms to me they have no idea as to what's going on. Tone deaf, baby. Yeah. yeah. What what's what's the right response uh, from a black from the black community and the white community? What do you think the right response is? And when I say right response, how do we make a little bit of progress and get past arguing about like a hundred percent? We know that all lives matter. Like you said, though, where do you allocate your resources in light of realities right. that we see and know? What what are what's what's the right response? Honestly, I think we're getting the right response. You know, people who don't care aren't going to care. People yeah. who do care aren't going to not care. Or you can't tell someone, like, there are a lot of white people that are allies that understand, sure. that, like, oh, shit, black people are getting, overall, like, not every single individual sure. case, but overall, black people are getting a bad shake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're really getting, they've, they've been dealt a, a kind of a bad hand. They're, they're doing as, as good as they can. You know, the ghettos were invented for black people. So many things were invented to keep people in this state of um, I mean, it, disproportionate to, to, value. To, to me, it comes right. back to the idea of what you said with, with fear and what I hate. And I, I struggle to speak out about it because a lot of people will write me off because of the color of my skin. But it just comes back to like, at the end of the day, you know, I, I see where, you know, the black community in a lot of cases have been positioned um, to be dependent upon the government and political leaders in exchange for votes. And I hate it. I, I, I mean, I'm very passionate about uh, the manipulation that I see. Mm. And I think it's I think it's ridiculous. Oh, and it's so deep rooted, dude. Like this manipulation goes back be, like past Jim Crow, like. Man, there's so much, there's so much strategy and tactic that's going into keeping black people at a at a lower level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Overall, and some of us are able to like see it for what it is and break out of that cycle. Um, but you know, I just think that the response now is, you know, just show show your true colors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just I like the fact that this is making people show their true colors. Yeah. People that you would think were one way, you're realizing like, oh shit, you're someone different i had yeah. no clue yeah so what do you think last our last episode we talked about cancel culture right what are your thoughts on that um i mean i've always been a proponent of cancel culture i cancel people all the time yeah. you know um because it's an energy thing we talk all the time about energy like it's not fair to me to force myself to engage with energy that's not going to benefit me yeah you know and i have that choice so when i find people who don't value me um, or their energy is toxic, I don't allow them like you don't have access to me because I know what, what energy you're bringing. You want to throw me off. You want my energy to reflect yours. Yeah. I don't have time to even fight with this. I'm going to cancel you yeah. until your energy is more in line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't ever want your energy to be in line, then you stay over there. Yeah. So let me ask you this in light of that idea of cancel culture. Um, some of these changes need to happen. Right. Uh, I think there needs to be more of a conversation around it as to whether or not it's something that we can learn from and use as a monument uh, to remind ourselves of what was versus the direction we want to go and, and what can be. Right. That That's part of it. Uh, there are some changes that need to be made. Let me ask you just clarification wise when it comes to cancel culture, like you are not a victim, right? Right. Um, what is what are what are your thoughts, and what would you say to um, the black community when it comes to how do you protect yourself from just becoming engulfed engulfed by a narrative that is primarily driven by white people that is meant to leave you in a um, dispowered is dispowered or a word disempowered no, disempowered thank you disempowered state. You, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I, I was, I was raised uh, just in, in a way that like, I'm like you, I'm always going. Right. And so I, I don't tend to dwell on problems a long time. I see them and I want to fix them. Like you're not a victim. Right. We'll get into the Henry mask here in a moment and how you took something that was devastating with your business mm -hmm. from COVID-19 and turned it into a net plus right. an, an asset. 
what's what's the right response in your mentality? Because to me, it comes back to that. Here are these shots fired. Everybody runs in a different direction, but they don't understand that if if they're not careful, they will run into a deeper mess. Mm -hmm. And I just I almost feel like the narrative that is coming and the arguing that is coming over not necessarily the phrase uh, of Black Lives Matter, but the equality that needs to be there Mm -hmm. can be almost like quicksand that we run people into that we never get out of because it's almost like you're the victim. Stay there and let me tell you how bad you should feel but don't go anywhere because I need to keep telling you how bad you should feel and why I'm going to be your answer. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and, and feel free to shoot me down and tell me where I'm wrong or where I'm no, off no, base no, with no. it. I mean, I, I definitely, uh, the white savior complex is real. right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you'll see that you saw fucking, what's in <laughs> you see them wearing kente cloths and fucking, you know what I'm saying? You see yeah. that shit? With Nancy Pelosi wearing a fucking kente oh, cloth? Yeah. yeah. A fucking kente cloth? Dude, that 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 is drives white savior me, mentality. It drives me insane. It's nuts. It's be, like, be, because what is being advocated there is that that the audience that she's speaking to right. is stupid. Yeah, they're gonna fall for that shit. Like the fuck. It drives me crazy. Yeah, like, and Nancy, I'm not. We know that you're an okay person. We know you're against <laughs> Trump. You ain't had to do that shit. Right. You could have. You could have put your fist up. You could have just said, "Black Lives Matter." We need to focus our resources and allocate them over here. Like, you didn't have to do that. So I see that a lot. Um, you know, the, the thing I will say, um, sure. you know, I'm not a victim, but what I am is a person who's suffering from PTSD. Yeah. And it's not from shots I took. I watched someone next to me get blown up, and I watched someone next to me get shot up, and I watched someone next to me fall in this fucking booby trap. It wasn't me. Sure. But I watched all these people around me that look just like me yeah. get fucked up. Yeah. So it is traumatic, you know what I'm saying? Because sure. you're like, you get survivor's guilt. And then it's also like, so what's the difference? Yeah. Could that have been me? Is there a reality where that becomes me? So yeah, it always puts you in this state of like, you know, because you don't want to feel like, oh, whoo. I didn't catch that shot. I'm good to go. Let me keep trucking. And you still feel like, damn, I didn't get the shot, but I could have. Sure. Yeah. Damn, they just took my guy down. Yeah. You know, and as a compassionate person, your heart bleeds for the person that just took that bullet. So while I'm not a victim, you feel like a victim because you feel helpless to like, how can this person not be victimized? I can't be safe. If this person is an easy target. Yeah. Who am I to be safe? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not that person. You know, I've, I've done things in life where I've risked my life because I saw someone else in danger. And it's like, damn, if I don't do something, this person's dead. But I could die helping this person. Yeah. Well, let's not fucking die because you got to help this person. So I've always been that way. And same now, it's like, that's why I speak up as much as I do. I don't have to, you know, because I'm rich, I'm successful, I'm this, that, and the other. But we can't be the ones that get quiet yeah. and just let the people who are directly impacted deal with the impact. Sure. It's, it's, impacting, it's impacting you. Sure. It's impacting you. It's impacting all, everything that happens in this country affects every single one of us. Yeah. 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 Mallory was saying yesterday, she was telling a story about um, she had, she had gone in during the quarantine and, uh, bought some food and was making a habit of supporting our restaurant. And I just thanked her for going in and like doing that. And you want to talk about just how that came across to you? Yeah, it was, it was right when COVID and quarantine and all of that started. And I went into the restaurant that Charlie owns and I just sh- later in the day I had shared with him, like oh, I was in the restaurant, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, thank you for supporting us. And it struck me I still haven't, I mean, that was in March, months ago, and it struck me that he would thank me for supporting the the restaurant because I feel like I'm a part of the restaurant, like I'm a part of this community. I'm very connected to him, um, and I feel like like I'm on your team. What do you mean? thank you for supporting you. Like I am you. Um, and so I was just sharing that with him and, and how I feel that with a lot of the local restaurants here in, in Dayton, um, as I support them during this kind of unprecedented time where business is a little, little rough. So, well, just, and, and you know, you went 
on to say to me over the phone, like, this is much bigger than restaurants. Like, you are me, right? And and, and sure. I, I am you. And I think, you know, just getting back into the idea of everything is energy, we don't understand how, and it's the brilliance of Jesus teaching about putting your neighbor's needs in front of your own and stories like the Good Samaritan. You know, I am just an advocate for let's talk about these things because conversations can produce real change. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we've got to be the boots on the ground and the justice that we want to see in the world. Like we, we've got to get out there and understand that uh, I am you and, and you are me. And just because that is true doesn't mean that we're necessarily in the same sector experiencing the same problems of the business, right. you know, using your analogy right. um, or, or in the community. And so when there are people hurting or suffering in one part of the business or the community, uh, then it is our obligation to reallocate resources. And I guess it's just really interesting to think through why that conversation uh, bothers so many people. Mm hmm. Yeah, because some people just, they've never been asked to tell. What do you think about black lives? Yeah. Some of them are like, hey, you know, they're cool. I mean, you know, I got a black friend. Okay, well, yeah, right. in this scenario, how do you feel about this? Ah, well, you know, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but, you know, there's no telling. He could have done something to the cop. I mean, they kill each other. So yeah. it's like, yeah. again, this narrative. Back in the day, cowboys and Indians. Sure. would be all over TV. It was always the cowboys. Defeating the Indians. The Indians yeah. are the bad sure. guys. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just propaganda. Like, yeah. if we know anything, we know propaganda is real. The way you phrase or position a person in front of people determines how they view that person and anyone that might look like that person. Yeah. You know? Um, it's a really good point. Yeah. It, it, especially if you were the child or wife uh, or family member of one of those Indians. Absolutely. Who, you know, held the ground first and all of a sudden see foreign invaders coming with much stronger weapons. And, and positioning you as the bad guy. You're the bad guy. Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? I, I've been here this whole time. I, I'm good. Yeah. No, you, you're not. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, what the fuck? Um, you, you know what I think a lot of this co comes back to, and, and obviously there is not an easy answer, but I can't help but wonder of the pride and arrogance and selfishness that... You know, when President Obama years ago said you didn't build that on your own, um, I watched the right attack him and, oh, yeah. and try to destroy him over that. Basically, as if like you weren't dependent upon anyone else. And I'm not, you know, I try not to be super outspoken about politics because I think it's a dirty business right. and there's no point in jumping into it because you're going to get it all over you. I'm just saying. Right. But that being said, like he was right about that a and he was attacked and it was turned into a political talking point that he doesn't want to give you any credit for, for what you built. Now people are worthy of, of the credit for inventing things and, and making things and changing things that change and add to the culture but it, it really does come back to there are people that go in front of us and set us up to do what we are going to do. And so when when I hear people, doesn't matter what the color of their skin is, respond negatively to, you know, the idea that black lives matter as an idea. I'm not talking about the political organization. Right. I'm talking about the idea. It's almost as if they feel like they're being attacked as if... Um, their life was not built uh, th that it's dependent upon someone else or what is a representation of their life that doesn't have those problems is because of them and you're attacking what they have. Right. And, and it's just like, how do we get to a place where we can't acknowledge, um, you know, in the hot button is the word privilege that we used what was in front of us to get to where we are and that some other people might not have had that same amount of resources or oh, let's call it privilege. Straight up. And, and 
what I'm trying to say is that when you call that out, it's almost like one group wants to say, well, you're taking away from what I've done and what I've built and who I am and what I have because you say that I had an unfair advantage. Straight up. Yeah, you know what? I got I got a number of rich friends. And some of them are like they inherited wealth. Some of them they just generated it from nothing. Yeah. And not taking anything from either one cuz someone can inherit wealth and lose it. Someone sure. can inherit health or wealth and grow it. Right. Mm-hmm. But it is a different it's a different dish on the table. Yeah. The person that inherited, even if they did amazing with it, and the person that had nothing and had to create it, it's just different. You know, it's like, huh, you know, so, you know, and, and you can, you can, let's, let's give it a totally different analogy. You got um, two kids, one kid, both of his parents are educators. The other kid, both the parents are drug addicts. Both kids graduate with a 4.0 GPA. Not to take anything from the one whose parents were educators. Sure. This person. Sure. Was not supposed to get there. This yeah. person had it really tough and they had to like do some other shit. So it doesn't take away. But sometimes if someone says, oh, you're self-made. I'm so proud of you. The other person may feel some kind of way. It doesn't take away. It's just the context of. Yeah. It's just what it is. This person yeah. is self-made. Um, I was thinking earlier when we were talking, like, I think that. What, um, again, once we start to view each other as one, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you got hurt, I should feel that. You sure. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something, if someone came here right now and started fucking you up, I'm supposed to feel that. I'm supposed to get up and do something about that. Um, if I live on a street and one of the houses catches on fire, I don't have to do shit. It's not my house. I don't have to do shit. I'm straight. I'm, I'm the house next to it. It's not my fucking house. Yeah. But if I watch this house catch fire, get engulfed, two things are going to happen. One, the house is fucked up. So now the property value is going to be diminished. Um, I got a big eyesore on my street that I got to see all the time. I'm constantly reminded of this eyesore because I failed to help. Yeah. And there's a chance this fire might fuck around, hit the grass, and come over to my house. People don't think about it that way. They just say it's not my house. Sure. It's not my fire to deal with. It's all of our fire to deal with. Yeah. And we all live on this street. What happens to one house on this street ultimately is going to affect all of our houses. Yeah. And I think that's the bigger thing. Like, that's the bigger thing for us to realize. Like, especially in this country, it's just getting to a boiling over point where the mistreated are tired of being mistreated and it's going to boil over and affect all of our homes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless yeah. we, unless we collectively call everyone on this street and say, bring your fucking water jugs, water hose, whatever you got. We got to point them at this house. This house is on fire. We got to stop this shit real quick. If we don't, it's going to affect all of our homes. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting, you know, from a, from a theological standpoint, uh, I think it takes a little bit of work to get outside of your own vernacular and, and what, where you were raised, who you were raised by in order, you know, some people will use the phrase, well, that's the pond that I was raised in, meaning it's hard for the fish that was raised in a certain pond to separate themselves from the water and what was in the water from who they are. It, it very heavily shapes their view of the world. Absolutely. And a good theology, which is an, a good understanding of God, realizes that God is beyond your color or my color, that you reflect God in a way that I don't reflect right. God. And if we we're going to get really deep into theology and understanding who God is, an assault on, on you as a black man is an assault on me as a white man because we are both made in the image of God. Mm-hmm. And there are ways that you can reveal him to the world and show him to the world that I can't and vice versa. Absolutely. However, because, and even with you being a woman, the truth of the matter is there is something about each of us, let alone all of the people on the planet that reveal something that is unique about God that nobody else can reveal. And, and, and so we've got to just get back to the point of we have a responsibility 
to, to force ourselves on an individual level to get o- up and over or out of the water that we were raised in that sometimes can severely limit how we see other people on this planet. You know, I used to uh, go to school with families who were, I mean, kids who were, whose family were like missionaries. Yeah. They travel all over. Yeah. They'd go to these countries and they'd see poverty and they'd help. And it's like you get a different perspective. Yeah, that wasn't sure. their existence. Yeah. But seeing that that's someone's existence mm-hmm. changed their perspective. Yeah. You know, it just made them more compassionate. You know, so. Yeah. We, uh, a former staff member here at, at church, uh, had on Instagram the other day all of he was putting up photos of all of the pictures and um, um, like memorable um, not icons but like precious moment type what am I talking about the we have no the idea. little figurines but they're not figurines oh yeah those little dolls of yeah 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 oh, okay. and and he was saying that he never realized he's black and he never realized like how all of those things were intentionally black like he was raised with them all being black and in a lot of cases it shocks people uh, in the white community when you help them understand that god's not white and jesus wasn't white right because we're just raised in a way like this is so funny the other day i was i was jogging and so you got to be careful with that because there's some people going to be mad at you. It's like, oh, what do you mean yeah. Jesus ain't white? Yeah. I make people mad Blue eyes, for, for a living fresh. Blue. What the fuck is wrong with you, R- man? Right. He drinks Frappuccinos. Yeah, you're right, right. <laughs> but I was jogging the other day, and I had finished the hard part of the jog, so I was walking it out to cool down. Right. And I went past someone that was with their dog, and they basically told their dog to come on. They had him on a leash, but the dog wasn't moving. And they spoke to the dog in a foreign language, Right. And it just kind of struck me and I started laughing as if all dogs only hear English. Right. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like wow. we have such a tendency to think that whatever our vernacular is, is, is also what everyone else's vernacular is. And so we're, we're having such a problem here because we can't hear somebody else say something because it doesn't line up with or make sense with our very limited vernacular it's good. rich fresh fresh thank you very much very very welcome so so excited to be here